Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting the Business Penguin from Etherfields by Awaken Realms. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to the second episode in this Etherfield series and today we are painting the Business Penguin. This is a companion that you can have join you on your adventures. Now the first episode in this series was the unboxing where I showed you what comes in the game and the overall production quality, especially the minis. If that's of interest to you, you can go check that out. So this guy is the first mini that I'm painting and who else to start it off with than a penguin that is holding a briefcase and a top hat. When I look through all of the minis that were in the game, they are absolutely amazing. There is such cool detail in them, but this guy definitely stood out as the one that I had to start with because I don't know about you, but I've never painted a penguin with a top hat and a briefcase before, so I had to start with this guy. So you can see here that I'm starting with the base, and that's because there are parts of the penguin that are really, really close to the base, like his briefcase and then his tail and that sort of area. And I knew that I was going to be building quite a bit of texture in there within the damaged leather that I do for the briefcase, and then building up the fur or feather. I'm not sure what penguins actually have, but that fur or feather look. And I thought if I do that first and then do the base and accidentally get some of the paint from the base onto where I've already built up some texture, it's going to be a bit of a pain having to build that back up. Whereas if I do the base first and then accidentally get some paint from the penguin onto the base, it's not going to be as hard to touch up. So I'm starting off with the base. So with the base, to me, there are two pretty clear different textures going on here. So there's the bricks which are on the left, and this part that I'm doing at the moment looked more concrete -y to me, so that's how I'm sort of painting it to look. So with the brick area, I just laid down a brown base, and then just wet blended in some reds and oranges, and then just a little bit of white at the end, just to get a bit of tonal variation. It was just quick and dirty, I didn't worry too much about where the different colours were going, because a brown wash will go over the top to bring all of the cracks and the details out a little bit more and they'll just tie all of those colors together. With the concrete look here, I started by laying down a gray base, and then I've just been wet blending in um, black and white, just to get, again, a bit of tonal variation. I didn't really like how it looked at first. I think by laying down the gray first, and like for the whole area, and then trying to blend in the black and the white just wasn't really working too well. And I think that's because I was trying to do, not like a stipply action, but I was trying to bring out some sort of texture. And so the way that the black was mixing into the gray that you know it was sitting on top of, or the white as well, it just wasn't working out the way that I wanted it to. So then I came back and did a second coat, and all I did was I laid some gray down just in a bit of an area, so I didn't cover the whole thing. And then I put some black or white just next to it, and then just gradually blended them together. Together. And it gave a much, much smoother transition. It looked much more natural, and I was really, really happy with how that looked. So I just took a little bit more time and just did areas of color and just smoothed them together rather than putting the black or the white over the top of the gray and then trying to sort of smudge them together. Anyway, we're now moving on to some washes. I just laid down the Agrax brown wash over the bricks. That's just flowed into the cracks and just brought all that detail out. And now I'm using a bit of Nuln Oil just to create some kind of, not greasy kind of looks, but just some grimier looking parts to the concrete. Um, washes are great for this sort of thing because you can put them down over an area for the first layer and because they're so thin they'll only make a slight shift to the color and then with the second layer just don't spread it quite as far and you can gradually build up a more concentrated area towards the middle over a couple of layers which blends out nicely back to the original base color and so that's what I did there I think maybe three or four layers and just a little dot finally in the middle and it just created that just sort of little grimy kind of look just to add just a bit more variation and just to sell that concrete look a little bit more. 
So here I'm starting to base coat the penguin, but as I started, I wasn't really sure what colors I should be doing for him because there are different types of penguins that come in different shapes and colors. So I just wanted to get a little bit of a guide. So I went onto the Etherfields Kickstarter page and I found this bit of artwork here for the business penguin. Now you can't see all of him, but from behind you can tell that he is just that typical black and white penguin image that we all sort of have in our head. But I wanted to veer away from this a little bit and not just do a standard black and white penguin. So I'm in Australia, as you can probably tell, and I wanted to paint at least a penguin that was a little bit sort of local to the area. Um, and so I found this image here of an emperor penguin. And these guys are from Antarctica, which is not super far away from Australia. But I really, really like the colouring on here. The little bit of blue that's in the fur, sort of feathers on the back. And that, you know little bit of orange sort of on its cheeks and under its chin there so that's what I used as a guide for painting the business penguin so there's not really too much to talk about for the next little bit as I'm just laying down flat colors so I'm just going to leave you just to watch as I block in the base colors and then I'll come back in as I start to do a little bit more interesting stuff than just putting down flat colors All right, so now I'm just going to lay down a black wash over all of the feathers just to bring out the detail and the texture in them, but also to shift this, the blue fur that I've done more towards a darker gray tone as the start of the shading so that I can build up some highlights on top of it. But you can see that I mixed in some Lamium Medium and that's just to thin it out a little bit because I don't want the black to have too much of an impact on it uh, because I just want it to be there to shift that tone. But when I put the black wash down on his feet, I just did that as straight non oil because their feet are quite a dark grey and so I really wanted it to darken that quite a bit. So I left that as just straight non oil to really have an impact on the feet but mixed in the Lamium Medium medium so that it didn't affect it quite as much. And now here I'm starting the process to build up this worn, scuffed, tarnished leather look that I want to have for his hat and his briefcase because even though he is just a little penguin, he has still been adventuring and his hat and briefcase won't be looking brand new anymore because they've gotten some scratches and scuffs along the way. So I use this exact same technique that I'm doing here on Hatchet from Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and this is the image here of how he ended up. So you can see his cloak, the part that goes up over over his shoulders, he, you know, looks different, looks more worn than what the other leather parts do, and so it looks as though it has copped a couple of scratches and things along the way. And that's the look that I'm going for with the penguin here. So I started with skeleton bone, which is my lightest bone colour, so it's not quite white, it's just an off-white, and I just made lots of 
lines and dots all over him that just to start that scratch look and now i'm using some different colored washes yellow red sepia and green just to slop all over it there's no rhyme or reason to where any of it's going i'm just putting it down just different colors in different spots and with all of them wet just blending them together and this is just going to get some natural tonal variation because originally this was a skin and so it's not necessarily going to have a uniform color to it. So the big thing that I learnt with this technique doing it the first time with Hatchet was that I needed to cover a much, much larger area with the first lots of the lines and the dots with the skeleton bone. Because what ends up happening is that after this wash dries, I then repeat that same two steps a few more times. So I'll lay a second lot of lines and dots with the bone color and then put some more wash down, then do go back to the bone color, do the lines and dots again. You can see I'm starting it for a second time here. But each time I do this step with the bone color, I cover a smaller amount of area. And what that'll do is allow the different levels of this bone color to come through so that some of these lines and dots will have had three or four layers of wash, some of them will have had two, and then some of them will have only had one so that it looks like there's different amounts of aging going on. When I did it with Hatchet, I didn't cover enough area with the first stage so that by the time I was on the last stage doing the last lot of the lines and dots, it had pretty much covered up that first layer completely. So what I did here is I covered a really, really good amount of area with that initial, initial, sorry, lot of the lines and the dots, just to make sure that by the time I get to the third or fourth time I'm putting down this bone color, and I'm only doing a really, really small amount of area, I haven't by that stage covered up the first layer of it, so that there is a really good amount of variation between how aged all of these scratch and scuff marks look. All right, so here I'm doing the final stage of the skeleton bone, and this won't get covered by the wash because I want at least some part of it to look as though there's fresh scuff marks, and so that these are going to stand out as a little bit lighter. But you can see I am covering a very, very small amount of area with this because the fresh scuff marks will only just be little ones, and I want the majority of the scratch and scuff marks to be showing to have that discoloration to show all of the different aging that's happened. And so you can see the final look there so I was much much happier with how this looked than how it did for Hatchet because I did cover a larger area with the initial stage of the lines and the dots which means that more of the, the various aging is able to come through. And so now I'm just painting the other little details on the hat. It looks like there's a little patch of material that was what I was painting just then and then there's a rope sort of looking thing that little bit that I'm painting just there wrapping around that red band I just took the red color from the artwork it does show that bit of ribbon that's running around as red so I followed um, the artwork for that and so now I'm just trying to give a worn and tarnished look to these little details as well so that the whole hat looks as though it's aged. And so with this red ribbon here, I've just gone back to that skeleton bone and I'm just putting just some little inconsistent dots around the top and bottom edge. And then a little bit later, I'll come back with a red wash just to go over the top and that'll give it that red look, but then it'll just make it look the look as though the edges are a bit frayed. And then I'm just using a sepia wash on those two, the patch and the rope that I painted as skeleton bone. And I'll just come back in a little bit with the bone again, just to touch up just some of the, the corners, just to make again, those look a little bit frayed and a bit worn, just so that it looks like there's general aging to the the entire hat.
And in the same way that I finished off the leather sections, I've just gone back to the skeleton bone for the red ribbon here, just to do a couple of fine little dots just here and there to make it look like some of the frayed edges have started to come apart more recently than other parts. And this is just to reinforce that overall look that this aging hasn't happened all at the same time. It's been happening over quite a long time and that he has had this hat and briefcase for quite a while. He's been on lots of adventures and that it's a gradual process that this aging has happened over. So now I'm just starting the highlighting process for the white fur that's on his chest and on his stomach. And just the overall look that I want to get with this is that the underside of his stomach is a little bit darker than his chest just because his chest will be getting more light than the bottom part of his stomach. So I just went to my cloudy grey first which is like my mid-range grey and I just went around and just picked out all of the little raised areas just to start to bring that texture out a little bit and to start to create a little bit more contrast between the raised parts of his fur and the recesses. And now I've moved on to Misty Grey, which is a lighter grey, and you can just see I'm doing lots of little short strokes rather than longer strokes, because I'm trying to reinforce that short fur feather look that the penguins have. And with the Misty Grey here, I don't continue it all the way down under his stomach, it just sort of stops at some point, I don't know, as it starts to curve back down, just so that now his chest and top part of his stomach looks lighter than that underside. And you can see that I also did the short little strokes to the undersides of his wings as well to make it look like they've still got that same fur texture. And now I've moved on to pure white and this is for the final stage of the highlighting. And so this is really just being kept to his chest just to reinforce that it's under more light than what the lower parts are. But again, really short, careful strokes, making sure that I'm only hitting the raised part of the detailing. And yeah, just the short strokes to keep that short fur feather look that the penguins have. So now I'm just starting to work on the yellow fur or feathers that emperor penguins have just underneath their chin. So what this is going to end up being will be a little orange section just under his chin that will then blend into yellow which will then blend out to the white fur of his chest. So what I'm starting here with is just my pale saffron, just a mid-range yellow and I've just watered this down a little bit so that all of the fur, the white fur that I've painted underneath will still show through. So I just put some down right under his chest and then I cleaned off the bristles and then with them slightly wet, I then just feathered out the edge, just feathered it out away from where I want the paint to be its most concentrated so that it just gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And eventually there's no yellow left and it just transitions nicely to the white fur. Then I went back with some more yellow, put it back in the same spot and then just didn't feather it quite as far. Just repeated that a few steps, just feathering it less and less and less every time so it becomes more concentrated immediately under his chin and then has fi finished it off with a bit of orange right under his chin only a little bit of feathering so that you then get that blend from orange through to yellow through to the white chest fur. And now we're onto the highlighting for the fur or feathers on his back and the tops of his wings. So the overall look that I want to get here is that it will look its brightest on the top of his back and the top of his flippers, which I guess would be his shoulders, I suppose. And then it will appear a bit darker down the bottom. So for the first stage here, I've just gone back to the same grey blue mix that I used as the base coat colour before the washes went down. And just like with his chest fur, I'm just doing lots of really, really short strokes making sure there's a gap in between each one just to reinforce that short fur feather look that the penguins have. And then once this stage is done, this covers the whole area. I've now added a little bit more blue, not too much more, just a bit more so that it moves a bit away from grey and gets a bit lighter because I'm using a light blue. And now I'm just going to be repeating the same process, but to a smaller area. So I'm starting at the top of his back. I'll do the full width of his back. But as I get further, further, further down his back towards his tail, it will get more and more narrow so that it essentially creates like a V sort of shape shape so that there'll only be a very narrow bit of highlighting down the bottom of his back but the top of his back gets the full width 
and then once I've repeat, sorry, completed this step, I'll then add a little bit more blue in and then just keep repeating the process and, and each time just painting a smaller and smaller and smaller area. So that V shape that I'll be painting will get narrower and narrower towards the bottom so that it will get the full width at the top each time at the top of his back. But as it gets further down his back, it'll just get smaller and smaller so that it'll have a nice transition from a darker blue right down the bottom where his tail is up to a really, really light blue at the top. And you can see that I'm finishing off with a little bit of white as well, just to get a bit more contrast, just to reinforce that the top of his back is getting light, but the bottom isn't. So normally I finish a mini by doing the base, but because I started with the base, the last thing to do for the penguin is his eyes. And I went with a glowing eye look because I wanted to reinforce the supernatural nature of the penguin. So I was originally going to do red glowing eyes, but I thought that would make him look too evil. So I went with blue to tie back in with his fur color and just to make him look like he is actually still kind of a good character. So I decided with a dark blue dot, then a light blue dot, and then finished with a very, very small white dot. But this finishes off the penguin. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. I really, really hope you enjoyed watching it and that you've got something out of it that you can use in your own painting. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet to stay up to date with more videos as they keep coming out. I'm going to keep working through Etherfield so there will be lots more videos of me painting the minis from here. Please do stop by the Twitter and Instagram accounts for this channel so that you can see what I'm painting at the moment and what I'll be painting in the future. But until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting everyone. Cheers.